Okay, there it is. That is one amazing <clears throat> painting and version of the description in Ezekiel of God. Just a spectacular vision um, that I only really read recently and I only really appreciated recently. Um, <clears throat> so, but <clears throat> I'd like to, uh, having just been talking about smallpox and uh, other various um, epidemiological and uh, disease-related public health issues in this time of uh, the coronavirus um, response. Uh, now with the total quarantine um, here in Brazil, me being here in Brazil, and uh, you know my uh, former residence and uh, homeland, New York, uh, United States and New York, under uh, <clears throat> similar total quarantine. Um, <clears throat> but my uh, my faith, my spiritual and intellectual reality, my mind, body, spirit understanding is lies with the Swede, the Swedes, uh, the, the Singaporeans, and the Taiwanese, who are operating by um, a method and a mode of thinking that just simply uh, strikes me as much more um, humane because of the various issues involved with um, this total stoppage. Um, their intelligence regarding <clears throat> the high risk groups, that is those with preconditions, especially the aged with information from Italy, like the 99.8% uh, of the those who uh, passed away because of the disease, tragically, were uh, had prior conditions and were 70 and older, if that was is 90% in terms of the age, um, however that goes. Um, with the Taiwanese pointing out that more, you know, that four and five people survive and only have light symptoms, actually, uh, and that's just a lowball number. That a higher percentage applies. Um, um, almost everywhere, and uh, perhaps even in, um, well, if it's 15% is one percentage, I remember seeing in the Italian situation, which is still higher than four and five. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, this is now, I just want to take a, uh, a deal with an aside that is not mentioned at all, um, that is inherent in the um, in making a whole cost assessment, in making a sufficient assessment, a necessary and sufficient assessment of all options and the situation uh, in a public health response to a um, an epidemiological crisis like this of a disease, including psychosomatic medicine <clears throat> and its spiritual, transpersonal um, angles. So, um, I want to start by turning on with a song, turning on a song, playing a song by, um, well, I'll start with Austin Powers and then I'll move to David Byrne. Oh, no, I'll just start with, I'll just do David Byrne. I did. Austin Powers to introduce the whole series, the series here. So, um, all right, here's David Byrne to start. Once in a lifetime is his song. All right, there goes the system slowly starting. David Byrne. Oh, this is a 2020 posting, so it's pretty recent.
<laughs> All right, so the much neglected part of modern spirituality, modern pop music, and the great uh, artists like David Byrne, who presents the issue that he actually has stated, <clears throat> oh, there's no meaning to my songs. Um, so, um, at least in terms of that kind of public statement, uh, he's not a reliable <laughs> spiritual leader, but uh, in his, certainly in his songs and their lyrics, they are an amazing um, spiritual experience. With water, his use of water as an image, um, the personal crisis in the materialistic age, right? So, let me, his poetry, uh, it's all, it shows certainly some kind of consciousness um, that he has or had or has gone beyond. So, um, for me personally, uh, my spiritual path began with uh, my father having raised me um, as an atheist. He left the Catholic Church, and my mother as kind of an agnostic, uh, sort of codependent on my father um, from Germany, in her case. And, uh, And so I, um, <clears throat> with my dad's focus on education, he got a PhD, or virtually got a PhD in um, political science. And so I uh, took my time. Okay, well, even for this interval, this uh, break, spiritual break, I've got to stop and come back. Cheers. See you in a moment. <laughs>